Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here for our first back in the game Sexy Saturdays video. I have my notebook, I have my notes. We are going to be talking about the first five books in Nalini Singh's Side Changeling series. Yes, five books. Why? Because there are 15 books out so far and because this is only like a once a month kind of deal, if I don't we will be talking about these books for the rest of my life. Uh, I'm really enjoying these books so far. Please forgive me, I don't have them memorized, but the first five books in the series are Slave to Sensation, which is the story of Sasha and Lucas, which is what introduces us to the Psy, the Changelings, the Leopard Pack, um, the kind of intergovernmental politics between human, Psy, and Changeling, the Psy, all of the kind of foundational things take root, obviously, in that first book. The second book is Visions of Heat, Faith and Vaughn's book. The third book is Caressed by Ice, which is Brenna and Judd's book. That's also my favorite book in the series, although we will end this video with a quick little, like, in order five ranking. The next one is Mind Possessed by Clay and Talon. And the fifth one is Hostage to Pleasure, which is Ashaya and Dorian's book. So this series, y'all, the first problem, I mean, the first two were really rough. The third one was pretty rough too, but I love Judd so, so much, so much so much that like it was fine things are definitely evening out as i'm listening i'm all the way up to book nine so i'm almost ready to do my next video for the series but obviously as they grow more contemporary as nalina got more practice in the series as things as the wind shifted in the genre so to speak the books get better but there were several times in the first two books that like the dialogue made me like snort laugh like they say buttocks and I just like I get it okay look I get it but at the same time like I'm five I can't even say the word buttocks out loud right now not in a sexual context without giggling so yeah I also okay so here's the deal guys I'm like let's see I'm getting serious can you tell I'm like putting my notebook down so shifter books are weird for me in the same way that like ABO fic dynamics are weird for me, which if you don't know what that is, I'll leave a link down below. Um, because there are actually a lot of things that I normally like wouldn't like in terms of like power dynamics and the insistence on overriding free will and consent stuff. So I would like the first couple books I was trying to like kind of get over that and look past that, but it's this weird thing that Nalini Singh does where it doesn't bother me as much or like it's there the registering of the normal issues I would have with those things are there but like her world building and her plotting is just fucking like this lady is genius in the best way I love the idea of the Cynet and I also love the idea of like the star network that connects the changeling packs and the differences between those two and it's the way they're described and trying to like picture them has been really really enjoyable and entertaining and like I'm always on the hunt for really good fan art for it. So if you're unfamiliar with what these books are about, they're essentially about the three races that exist alongside each other in the future, human, changeling, and psi, which is sort of for psychic. There are also several different like designations within the psi community. I'm not really going to get into all of those necessarily because there are 15 books in the series, guys. It's a lot. It would be a lot to recap. But basically, we have come upon the Psy community at a moment where they are breaking what they call silence protocol, which are these mental restrictions placed on size to keep them from going insane. Because part of the makeup and the mental makeup of being a Psy, this kind of cold removal and emotionlessness, is the, the tendency towards insanity. However, as the books go on, we come to learn that that hasn't always entirely been the case. The reasons that this kind of emotionally suffocating protocol were put in place were far more political than they necessarily were like advantageous just to the side community. And of course, we also have the changeling packs who operate on a pack dynamic, but who are also deeply in touch with their emotions and actually need platonic and non-platonic physical touch in order to heal and be accepted, much like a lot of animals do. And then of course, there are humans who we don't meet a ton of in the beginning, but there are some, like Talon, who is the Tally, who's the, the narrator of our third book. She's human. Um, but as we go on, we kind of learn that because of the history of these three groups interacting, not all the humans are as human as they may seem, and not all the size are as cold and removed as they may seem. So there's just a lot of really interesting interplays that continue to go on. 
uh, as the books develop. But in sticking with these first five books, the things that mostly stuck out to me were one, Nalini Singh's world building is off the charts. I can already tell that she's playing the long game. We have met a character by, I believe, book two, who I know, like, I don't know who it is, but I know that in book 15, we've just finally learned who they are. Their name is the ghost. They operate in the Psynet, which is like the neural psychic network that connects all of the size and he's there as like a rebel and a hacker trying to get at the root and the secrets and the people who no longer want to be a part of Simon. We just learned in book 15 who he is and we meet him in book two. So I'm not kidding when I say that Nalini is playing the long game. Also I love the dynamic that the characterization of these different races sets up which is of course this because it's the Psy changeling book books the vast majority of couples are sigh changeling so there's this very much a push and pull between this emotionally removed closed off um physically isolated being and then this almost overly emotional borderline hot-headed deeply invested physically touch reliant community um which gets me into the third thing i love which is maybe the thing i love the most about these books which is the way that nalini singh handles assault and consent and um the third book really is where this sticks out for me and it's part of why I love it so much. In addition to loving Judd, who is an arrow, who is basically a psi assassin, so he's like the coldest of the cold, who then learns to feel. That's why I love it. But it's also a book in which Brenna, our main character, has been assaulted. Yes, physically, but that's not the part of the narrative that takes up the most. It's that she's been psychically assaulted. Literally, she has had her brain invaded and had her thoughts and her mind invaded and read and violated without her consent. Um, and so obviously it's, it's not even like a rape allegory. It's rape on like a psychic plane. In addition to, we do learn that the person who does this also um, physically assaulted her and penetrated her using objects by doing it psychically. It's really dark and disturbing. Um, these books are full of things that are super dark. And this is a community that's super dark. Several of the books are chasing serial killers or mass murderers or people who are on murdering sprees. So trigger warnings for ass like assault, corrective assault, mental violation, um, alcoholism, drug abuse, child abuse, all of those things at some point are kind of touched on, but Nalini handles them so deftly. And the way that the changeling community interprets and uses and has a reliance on physical touch and consent to physical touch was just really powerful and emotionally touching for me to read as an, like, an assault survivor. So I just really think that Nalini did an amazing job, which it's not to say that I was surprised, but that I wasn't necessarily expecting to see handled so deftly in this huge sprawling urban fantasy series that is very action packed and very fast paced and in which a lot of things happen. Um, so yeah, that is kind of my overall takeaway from the first five books. I'm sorry if that feels a little convoluted. Um, I'm trying really hard not to make these books just, or those, these videos just a wrap up of the books because Goodreads can do that for you or you can just read them. But I hope what I'm saying makes sense given the context that I provided. Um, to do my little thing, my little top five, in order of least to most liked, I, my least liked book is Visions of Heat, which is Faith and Vaughn. I just don't like Vaughn. For some reason, his insistence that like he knows what's best for Faith and he knows how it's really going to be and they're fated to be together. And like, it's not like he's the only character that does it, but it really bugs me with Vaughn. And I don't know why, but it really does. So, and here's the thing. All I'm rating these based on heroes because I love all of these heroines to death. I would ride or die for pretty much any of these heroines, some more than others, but I love them. I love them. I am a broad for broads. I'm a lady for ladies. I'm here for these women. So I'm ranking the men based on basically who I want to dick punch the most versus who I want to dick punch the least. Uh, so after Faith and Vaughn comes uh, Mind to Possess, which is number four, which is Clay and Talon. I don't hate this book as much as some of the other people who are in this like group chat read thing that I'm doing do. I think it's just because I'm kind of a sucker for the like childhood best friends, like pseudo siblings go through shit kind of trope that I really, really liked seeing Clay and Tally, but Clay and Vaughn seem to be very much so cut out of the same cloth. So like not necessarily the biggest fan. The third one or the one that I, yeah, third in the rankings is Hostage to Pleasure, which is Ashaya and Dorian. I am, was really interested by the relationship between Ashaya and Dorian and the way that Dorian comes to respect Ashaya as an equal in terms of like his like 
her ability to take care of herself. Um, there's a lot of stuff in these books about the men processing and coming to respect a woman's ability to like do that. And also like when they fail to do that, because there are some times where that fails to happen. Um, but I really loved Ashaya. And there's also some really interesting sibling things that happen in this book because Ashaya has a twin. But in terms of just the couple, that's my third one. Number two on my list are Sasha and Lucas, who we first meet in our very first book, Slave to Sensation. Um, of course, this is the oldest book. So it was a little bit of the roughest for me. So that's a part of the reason why it's probably not my most favorite. But I love Sasha and Lucas. And I love what we continue to see of Sasha and Lucas through the background of the series. Um, Nalini does a really good job balancing all of her storylines as the series continues. So I love them. And I love the so many of the roots of these stories are planted with Sasha and Lucas. And so much of what we learn in that book continues to be like so overwhelmingly important. Um, and I really love the tension between the two of them and like the begrudging respect that you continue or begin to see these two communities have for one another. Which of course leaves me my first book, which is Caressed by Ice, Brenna and Judd. I love, I love a good assassin book for all of the ways that they're problematic. And Judd is like the assassin of assassins because he's a psi arrow. So he's like the coldest of the cold. And of course, Brenna, but he was there for Brenna in her healing time after her assault. And she's still like dealing with all of that and unpacking all of that which as an assault survivor was a really really meaningful storyline to me so the way that he's there for her and able to offer her and introduce to her this kind of like new platonic way of being and the way that that evolves and folds i just really loved it i loved it so much really really like that book guys i'm really enjoying it i'm already on, like i said i'm already on book nine so i only have one more book to read and then i'll be able to do the second round of these books and i'm also starting to get into like the latter end of the books and so from what i hear we're about to meet some bears which is very cool because we met all sorts of changeling packs so far but no bears so i'm very excited if you have read these side changeling books and you have thoughts on my thoughts or thoughts of your own please feel free to leave them down below if you've made it this far into this very long video please leave me an emoji so that i know you stopped by so that i can come and give you a little bit of love in return i know it can be hard to leave a compliment thank you so much to sylvia for that idea and until next time friends leave me all of your bookish thoughts down below come find me on social media to talk books and take care of yourselves each other and have happy reading